welcome to the 700 Club. Harsh retaliation, punishment, revenge. That's what Iran is threatening against Israel after an attack on its consulate in Syria. The strike killed two Iranian generals responsible for aiding terror groups in their war against the Jewish state. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl reports. The attack on the consulate building in the Syrian capital is considered an attack on sovereign Iranian territory. Israel has not claimed responsibility for the blast that killed General Mohammad Reza Zahidi, along with his deputy and five other Iranian officers. General Zahidi was a commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Quds Force and a key figure in Iran's proxy war against Israel that provides training and weapons for terror groups in the region. Zahedi and his deputy reportedly meeting with those leaders inside the consulate, likely planning further strikes on Israel. Iran is threatening a harsh retaliation, and Hezbollah said the enemy would receive punishment and revenge. CBN News war correspondent Chuck Holton says Iran doesn't want a one-on-one -on -one war with Israel. They want to continue with this proxy war through fighting Israel through the Houthis, through Hezbollah, and through Hamas. That includes sending weapons to terrorists inside biblical Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank. Israeli forces operating in the territories discovering weapons shipped by Iran. Massive amounts of explosives. They're starting to find mines, landmines, hand grenades, rockets, uh, light anti-tank weapons, all sorts of uh, weapons like that. And that bodes very poorly for Israel. If a force the size of the one from Gaza that struck Israel on October 7th came out of Judea and Samaria instead, the destruction and death toll could be much worse. Because it basically surrounds Jerusalem on three sides. If 1,500 bad guys had come a across into Jerusalem and started going crazy, they could have easily killed a lot more people. They could absolutely wreak havoc in Jerusalem, the capital city. In Gaza, seven aid workers with the World Central Kitchen died in what Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called an unintended strike. He said officials are investigating and will do everything for this not to happen again. The IDF said it is making great efforts to enable a safe passage of humanitarian aid and is working in full cooperation and coordination with the WCK organization to support their efforts to provide food and humanitarian aid to the residents of the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, U.S. State Department and Israeli officials met for two hours in a video conference call to discuss Israel's impending invasion of Rafah, Hamas's last major stronghold in Gaza. The White House said the two sides agree on the need to destroy Hamas and Rafah, but expressed concerns over the risk to innocent Gazans. The Israelis agreed to consider those concerns and hold follow-up discussions. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, there needs to be a safe area created, and the IDF is in position to create that safe area so civilians from Rafa can go to a safe area that they would then be under the protection of the IDF, wouldn't be a, uh, under threat from the IDF, and then you could uh, continue the war against Hamas and continue to wipe it out. My heart goes out to the workers who were lost from the World Central Kitchen. Uh, they were responsible for over 60% of the NGO aid going into Gaza. The fact that they have suspended operations as a result of this strike, and it was a strike from Israel. It was quite targeted when you see the picture of the uh, van that they were traveling in. It's quite clear that it was a targeted munition. And it, I don't understand how it ever happened because they claim they were coordinating their trip with the IDF and the IDF knew and knew that they were coming from a warehouse filled with food and they were trying to feed civilians inside Gaza to prevent starvation. Uh, this is something that Israel has to get to the bottom of and, and they promised full transparency. Uh, I, I hope and I pray that we can w wrap up this war against Hamas as quickly as possible. Uh, these kinds of um, casualties of war are, uh, it's just horrific. It should not have happened. 
and and I I trust the IDF to be transparent. I hope they live up to that trust. Well, the threat from Iran goes far beyond its support of terrorism. The world is focused on the war against Hamas in Gaza, and Tehran is using the distraction as a cover to develop its nuclear weapons program. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell has that story. As Israel fights Hamas in the south and prepares for a potentially greater conflict with Hezbollah in the north, Iran remains a major player behind the chaos. That could be due to the regime trying to distract the world from what's happening with the country's nuclear program. Whether it is a formal strategy or it's just happening that way, it's absolutely a danger. Iran threw out the nuclear inspectors, eight most important ones, in September 2023. They tripled the speed of enriching uranium for most of the last few months, between 60 percent and 20 percent enriched uranium. Experts believe the regime has enough uranium to make up to eight nuclear weapons. They could enrich to 90 percent weaponized uranium in like a week or two. Israel, the United States, the world is very distracted by Hamas, Hezbollah, and the rest of the world by Ukraine. So could Iran try to break out now? Yeah. Iran claims it successfully launched three satellites earlier this year. Bob sees this as especially significant in terms of weapons delivery systems. The technology they use for launching satellites can also be used potentially for nuclear weapons, in particular um, ICBMs, which can go a lot further. As far as we know, they're not there yet, but we have to keep a very strong eye on that, too. Rafael Grossi, chief of the International Atomic Energy Agency, recently reported that Iran continues to prevent access to inspectors and video recorded by cameras at key nuclear sites. We must move forward in the clarification of the many aspects that require this from Iran. All countries that have signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty are not supposed to have nuclear weapons in any form. This is forbidden in international law. Bob says Iran is effectively blinding the world to the country's nuclear progress. It's a very dangerous situation, and it's problematic. The, the, the IAEA Board of Governors, you know, has basically decided to do nothing about it, certainly not referring it to the U.N. Security Council. Bob maintains sanctions from the original 2015 nuclear deal could be reintroduced through a snapback arrangement but this provision has a time limit. If the United States and the three key European countries want to snap back, they can snap it back and the entire UN Security Council would need to enforce it. When you get to October 2025, January 2026, so many of the limits on Iran fall apart that Israel and I hope the United States will need to make a decision to do something potentially militarily with Iran if it does not radically reduce where its nuclear program is today. Retired General Amir Avivi, head of the Israel Defense Security Forum, sees Iran's nuclear threat in a global context. If Israel has to go to an all full-scale war with the Lebanon, this is our chance also to hit Iran and all the nuclear sites. So really, if the U.S. wants to avoid a regional and maybe global war, it needs to show leadership and they really, really deter Iran and Hezbollah this is the only way to stabilize the Middle East. Avivi also uses more of a moral perspective to describe Israel's war with Iran's proxies. It's a war between darkness and light, between evil and good. We're fighting the whole Western society's war against extremism, against people who really want to destroy our way of living. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. It's like there's this elaborate plan to keep us all distracted from the main thing. And the main thing is if Iran gets nuclear weapons, that completely changes the balance of power in the Middle East. It is an end game for Israel because now Tel Aviv will be under threat of nuclear attack. And would they actually launch that? I think the answer based on their rhetoric over the past 40 years is yes, they would. Uh, they consider Israel to be the little Satan, and guess who's the great Satan? Well, you and I. And if that satellite launching technology turns into ICBMs, what's the next target for them? So why are we negotiating? Why is this 
allowed to happen? Why did the administration send them $10 billion? What kind of message was that? They're sponsoring Houthis. They're sponsoring Hezbollah. They're sponsoring Hamas. And it seems to be all some kind of grand game to keep the world distracted. It has upended the Abraham Accords. I mean, it's, it's definitely put them on pause. Uh, and, and was Israel close to having peace with all of its neighbors? Well, for the Iranians, that was unacceptable. And so how do, how do they proxy war to a distraction point and, and sort of hide what they're really trying to do? Again, a nuclear-armed Iran is unacceptable because it puts everything, the entire world, at risk. And please let us wake up to it. To add to the distraction, we're in election year. We seem to be incredibly divided. The Democrats and the Republicans can't even talk to each other. They can't even come to any kind of compromise on legislation. So how can we come to compromise and say, well, it's in our national interest to stop this? Can we have a unified voice speaking to the world that people will actually believe? Are, are we so distracted with our internal problems that we can't pay attention to the world stage? For Christians, now more than ever, let us pray and let's believe that there is this righteous judge because he is a righteous judge and can he intervene on our behalf?